Hey, what's good, people? This is Malcolm. You're on Malcolm Talks. We back at it again. We back at it again, man. I try not to let a day go by. We right back at it. I hope you guys are doing well. It is definitely a Monday morning. I'm running a little bit late, but we still on time. Uh, I just want to talk about something kind of serious, man, that happened, bro, in Buffalo, New York. Um, of course, y'all know it was a mass shooting. And if you didn't know, in Buffalo, New York, 11 people got killed. Uh, it was at a supermarket, a supermarket called Tops like an old supermarket that's been in the community for years. I think it's like 60 years old. The community, at least the zip code, is 80% black. The gunman <clears throat> was a little white 18-year-old kid. And I say kid, he ain't really a kid, but that's the facts. Um, they're saying it was racially motivated. And I'm inclined to believe that when you look at the, the evidence, I mean, the man told authorities, he told the police after they apprehended him or whatever, he told them, he was like, yeah, it was racially motivated. I was targeting black people, that's what he said. So I don't know what the big deal is. Because I think some people think it might be a conspiracy or something. They might think, they might say, well, you know, it's not real. The media is trying to make it seem like it's a, a hate crime so that so that they could keep black and white people further apart and all this other stuff. I don't know, man. I, I just don't know about that. Because I was actually watching one of the channels I watched. See, because I'm a big, and I'm, a, I'm about to go all over the place with this, so please excuse me rambling. But see, I watch a lot of like nature YouTube channels, a lot of survival channals, prepping, uh, prepper channels, bushcrafting, you know, where they talk about different tools and they talk about knives and how to build shelters and how to make fires. and all. So a lot of that stuff, man, is, is very interesting to me. And I watch that kind of stuff. Well, one of the guys that I watch, um, You know, it seems like here lately he's been putting out a lot of content about conspiracy theories and all this stuff. <clears throat> and it's starting to go a little bit left for me where I'm just like, wait, what? But yeah, I, I turned on one of his uh, videos and he was talking about how it's all a conspiracy and that it's the fake news and, you know, how the news is trying to push this whole idea that it was racially motivated because of this and that. My thing is, what's the facts? What are the actual facts? And see, it's interesting, man, because I think um, although we may share this love of the wilderness and going out and, and, and you know, enjoying shelter building and all these other great things that you can do in the wilderness, there's a whole other body, other body of information we do not share, my brother. We don't share that. Like, to me, this was a, clearly a hate crime. The man wrote a 180-page manifesto, supposedly. That's what they say, at least. That's a book. And in this 180-page manifesto, they said he was talking a lot about how he didn't like black people. This is what it is. He was talking about things like uh, replacement theory. I don't know if y'all heard of replacement theory. I haven't had a, a chance to read up, on, read up on it, but I think it's like, see, I think people look at critical race theory as like, a lot of people don't like critical race theory. They don't even want to talk about it or think about it. On the flip side of that, you have something called replacement theory, which I guess is like, um, you know, white people saying that, you know, they're trying to get rid of all white people or something through, through different means and measures and we need to stand up and do something about it or something like that. I'm 
gonna be honest, I haven't read into it, but I will though. I'm about to I'm about to really study what that is. Cause I even heard Fox News talking about that. I think Tucker uh, Tucker Carlson was talking about that. So we got we're gonna get to the bottom of that too. So but I digress. I'm going all over the place. Uh, let me get back to you know what actually happened for those of you who don't know what happened with the whole Buffalo shooting. Like I said, it was at a supermarket, so you gotta you gotta just think, man. Imagine you at Whole Foods chilling. You're at Publix, Kroger, wherever. And then this, this happens. Uh, man, that's that's gotta be terrifying. But uh, you know, ten people, ten people died, man. Ten people, ten people were killed, and three others were wounded. And eleven of the people that got shot were black. Uh, they said the kid traveled 200 miles to the to the state in order to carry this stuff out. They said this man had a camera on him and live streamed the whole attack. I want you to think about that for a second. He live streamed it. Let me ask you a question. Why would he do that? Why would he do that? If you really think about it, because why do people live stream things? Well, you live stream things because you have an audience. Right? Correct me if I'm wrong, guys. I think this man had an audience. Um, I think it was planned. Well, it was obviously planned. But there might be something, there might be something way bigger than we even know going on, man, behind closed doors, bro, where it's getting real scary out here. So much so that I'm like, damn, do I even need to be doing this video? I mean, I know we got free speech, but I'm like, sheesh, these guys are crazy out here, man. So the man traveled 200 miles. Um, you know, but the, you know, the police and stuff when they invest, they're investigating it. They believe he acted on his own. You know, they they believe that you know was nobody else involved. It was just him. He was crazy as hell. He just went out and did it. Uh, so when the police caught him they didn't shoot him they didn't shoot him they said he took his gear off first of all the man went in there with full tactical gear on bulletproof vest helmet saying when he walked up in there the security guard was the first person to kind of see him like hey what you doing you know got into a shootout with the security guard killed the security guard. The security guard uh, clapped back at him, but like I said, he had on a bulletproof vest. Didn't penetrate. He kept doing his thing. But yeah, the police, when they when they finally got him, they didn't shoot him. You know, they said he, uh, he put the rifle to his chin like he was going to kill himself, but then decided against that. Put the rifle down. You know, started taking off his bulletproof vest and everything, got on his knees and put his hands behind his back or head or whatever. And the police came over and they arrested him. Very interesting. Very interesting, man. Um, it just seems really weird. It just seems like uh, if that were a black guy, it would have been a hail of gunfire uh, by the police. And, you know, a lot of y'all might be like, man, come on, man, that's ridiculous. Why would you say something like that? Well, I mean, I mean, look, look, look what evidence I got to go by. There's been a lot of situations, man, where there's been more than one situation where you look up, you're like, wow, seemed like a black person would have been killed in that situation, but he wasn't, well, interesting. But, this kid was obviously, uh, he was obviously cuckoo up here. I think I read that when he was 17 in school, he actually made a threatening comment to somebody. And they ended up putting him on a, did a mental health evaluation or something. But they didn't release the results of the evaluation, of course. They're not gonna tell us what he was thinking or whatever, but cause I think that's a confidentiality type of thing. But yeah, they even interviewed the guy who sold him the uh, AR-15 or whatever it was. He was 
like, man, I feel terrible about that. I, I, I didn't know he would go do something like that. Obviously, he didn't know. But, you know, it's just crazy that you can be that young and go get something so deadly, so dangerous. Um, you know, witnesses say the man was crouched down, walking in like he was in, like he was Rambo or somebody, like he was G.I. Joe. Full tactical gear on. To me, it sounded like he was trained, or maybe he trained himself. Um, and you know, Buffalo, man. Buffalo, New York. You know what their motto is? It's the city of good neighbors. That's the motto. You know, I think the state said that they were going to um, provide $2.8 million, if I'm not mistaken, in, in financial assistance to the uh, victims and their families. But I don't know if it's going to be like payments like that. I think they're just going to do like free Uber and Lyft back and forth to the to the supermarket or something like that. And there's some other stuff they're going to be doing. Because they know a lot of people depend on that supermarket that live in the community. But I'm like, free Uber and Lyft back and forth to the supermarket. It's like, okay, I appreciate that, but well, I guess anything's better than nothing. Sorry. Uh, what else? Like I said, the grocery store is 60 years old, so this is probably got a lot of people been going to the same grocery store their whole life but i got a question for you man so so what is it man what's going on man comment down below man why why are these things happening why are people so mad why are people so angry man i want to know bro like is your grandmama and your auntie are they gonna are they gonna have to come out strapped now do they need to have a bulletproof vest on when they go to the when they go to the uh Publix? They go to the grocery store now. I'm asking the question: Is Grandma gonna have to be strapped now? Evidently, that's the case. Where's the safe? Like, like what? What are we doing? What's the goal of all this? What, what's what's going on, man? Um, you know, I was looking at some other stuff. They said. Uh, that it's been 198 mass shootings in 2022. I want you to let that sink in. It's been 198 of them in 2000, just this year. I'm like, 198? But see, they define it as four or more people shot at the same time. Like, you know, four or more people, yeah, four or more people shot, but I don't have any other details other than, other than that. But, um, like, I'm not, I don't have a bar chart or, or a line graph where I can see the trends and whether or not it's going up. But to me, it's almost kind of weird. Like, we're all sort of in this strange, toxic love triangle. And what I mean by that is, like, you know, things like this happen, they're tragic. But then you have the news, and the news comes around and they talk about it, they talk about it, they talk about it. Which, in turn, might ignite other people to want to do something like that. And then you got social media. Guys like me, you know, people online telling their two cents. You know, I might only get seven views from this, but I'm just saying, like, there's a lot of people who have major followings that talk about these kind of things and it brings even more attention to it, which causes even more of a of an uproar in terms of the in terms of the uh, friction between two sides, basically. And then I think what happens, man, is, is somebody that might have been kind of neutral on the situation, somebody that might have been like, well, I just think it was a terrible thing that happened. Now they're taking sides almost like, like yes, this this guy he went in and, and he killed these black people and it was racially motivated. I'm convinced of that. 
But what if that's not the case? There's a lot of people out there that believe that all of all of it is a conspiracy. But my thing is, how can you say that when you when you're faced with such facts? When there are facts that are in your face that are so seem uh, very clear to me. And see, that's where it starts. And you know now. Um, the situation has gotten even worse. And it's just it's just crazy, man. It's something is something is going on with people's psych psychology right now. You know, something is happening. And I can't help but to think I can't help but to think back to Russia, man. Like you look at Russia, you know how they interfered with our elections and that's proof, that's been proven. And then you know they put, you know they put things on the internet. You come to come to find out they're not even real. They're just there to sow division and things like that. And I, I know that's a real thing. I know that's a real thing. A lot of times you'll see something you don't know if it's real. But are we are we really gonna do that? Are we really gonna question everything we see on TV? Are we gonna look at everything like it ain't real, or are we gonna look at the facts? And to me, looking at the facts means that you're reading multiple news organizations and you're getting multiple perspectives on the same story. You'll start seeing things that don't add up and don't make sense. From what I'm reading this whole thing in Buffalo, this is a real situation, guys. And this is something that was deplorable, horrible, racially motivated, and it's got to end. I feel so bad, man, for the families and stuff like that because... just unthinkable man it's, it's just crazy bro this is malcolm you're on malcolm talks i appreciate y'all visiting the channel go ahead and comment down below man what you think about this whole thing um like the video subscribe just trying to keep you guys updated and informed on what's going on in the world and my take on it peace